Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Gaijin has released a bunch of planned battle rating changes, including some pretty cool BR decompression for aviation. One of the things to also note is I'll be splitting these videos into two parts. In this video you'll see the ground and naval changes, and in the other video, which will come out in a little bit, you will see the aviation changes. Uh, there isn't a ton for ground and naval, which is why we're putting them together, the major ones are the aviation stuff, so definitely a lot to talk about and a lot to think about there. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video. The first change that they're doing in realistic when it comes to ground is the Strela 10M2. The vehicle is going down to 9 OBR from 9.3. And this isn't really too much of a surprise. If you've been using vehicles like the Strela around uh, the BR, such stuff, such uh, which uses like the Stinger missiles, um, which aren't the proximity ones, you'll realize that these missiles are doing really poorly right now. The Type 93 is another uh, kind of uh, show of this. Uh, they are really struggling uh, to be able to detect stuff most of the time uh, and also. They do not really overload quickly enough uh, to be able to stay on target, uh, especially if there is a ton of different stuff in the air. Their ground use is pretty limited as well, uh, basically just being a scout and that's it. So the vast majority of the time, you're not really that useful to the battlefield. Going down to 9.0 does bring it into another lineup with the T-64A, which will be nice. It also means that it will see A7 a lot more, where there's a lot more CAS elements which are definitely less um, less crazy than a lot that you see at 9.7 and 10.0, but the simple fact is all these vehicles are just not doing very good. After the missile changes they made uh, a year or maybe two years ago, all of these vehicles just suck, and it's because of the fact that they have one way of playing, and that way was significantly nerfed multiple times. Not just, um, and by nerfed I don't mean artificial nerfed, I mean realistically nerfed. They basically made the visuals on the missiles very m much easier to see, uh, so therefore as a plane it's harder to get hit by them. They also changed the way that the missile paths work, uh, they made them more realistic, meaning that they are just worse. So overall, they just kind of got hammered in the head and uh, they haven't ever recovered. It's not a surprise that we've seen a lot of these vehicles struggle or go down in BR recently, and the Strela, since it's the most recent one added, no surprise to see that go down as well. The Marda 1A3 though, this one is a surprise going down in BR. It's going from 8.0 to 7.7. .7. Now, I've been playing the Marda 1A3 quite a lot recently. The vehicle itself is not a bad vehicle. Um, it uh, has an interesting lineup around us with the Gepard, the Rakuten Jagdpanzer II Hot, and also the M48A2 GA2. What the Marder 1A3 gives you is a thermal sight, along with the DM-63 and of course the missiles, the Milans, which are very, very good. Seeing it go down to 7.7 uh, .7 is very surprising, because at Ato you have a lot of other kind of IFV things, which are very similar in capacity. The Warrior, for example, uh, which you find at 8.0, with a lot worse gun but more Milans, then you also had the Bradley at 8.0, as well. Uh, you even have other vehicles which are of similar stature, which uh, kind of sit around with slightly different playstyles, like the AMX-13 Hot, which is now at 8.0, which started out way higher, um, but luckily that went down in BR eventually. I disagree with this Marder going down. I think it's a very mobile, very aggressive scout, and can be used to great effect. Would I take it over something like a DF-105, which is already a 7.7? It depends on the map that I'm on, and it depends on what I'm generally playing. But for me, the Marda is very good. Um, I really enjoy both Mardas, uh, which are around those BRs, and at 7-7, you're not really gaining much of a lineup. Like, you're basically getting the Racket and Jagdpanzer 2. I suppose if you have the mouse ground out, you can run it with that, but it's not as if it's going to be that much of a power lineup. And also, you're just going to take the DF-105 over it in most scenarios at 7-7. Uh, so it seems a little bit odd to me um, as a change. I think I, I'm, I would be very surprised if this thing is doing poorly because of the stats of the vehicle. Um, but then again, I have been wrong in the past. So with the second set of ground changes, the big one is the M48s. So the M48A1 for China, the standard M48A1 for America, and also the Magak-1 for the Israelis 
are all going down to 7.0. Uh, so now they basically join their German brethren, uh, who uh, was put down at to 7.0, the M48A2C. A lot of people basically said that this change uh, was uh, silly and didn't need to happen. Uh, and now we'll have to see what the reaction is to this change, with all of its brothers going down to 702. Looks like maybe the M48s in general were struggling, just the German one was struggling the most, and this is obviously before they added all of the 7377 vehicles that you see now in the German tech tree. The M48s uh, should not go down in BR. The, the simple change that needs to be done with these things, which I've been saying for 3 to 4 to 5 to maybe... 10 years, however long these vehicles have been in the game, is to remove the stock APCR. The fact that these vehicles still have stock APCR means that until you get the M431 shell, you are completely useless against the vast majority of targets that you face. So you are just a punching bag until you get to rank 3 modifications. And most people are going to start the vehicle, they're either going to GE to get the heat, or they're going to struggle through it and just get hammered over and over and over again, and a lot of those people are just going to not play the vehicle. The M48s, as vehicles, are very good when they're spaded. Insanely good at 7.3. But getting them spaded is one of those things where you have to walk through the valley of death. It is absolutely horrific. And I've done it three times now, with three separate tech trees, with all of these separate vehicles, my win rates are positive, my KDs are positive, my mind is lost. So all you have to do is remove that APCR stock round. Don't put them down in BR, just make them easier to play stock, and they will do a lot better when it comes to the game. I don't understand why they don't remove it. It's a very weird move. The AS4247 is also going up to 2.0 from 1.7, Obviously, they buffed its uh, reload rate um, a few days after it came out. I spaded the vehicle. It took a few games. It was pretty fun. Um, it was overall all right. It's a very nice little flanking machine. I feel like uh, you, you, I, I wouldn't personally put it up in BR uh, just because of the fact that the gun is not the best. And the more you put it up, the more it will see the 2-7 bangers, which are very, very strong in the game for most of the nations. So I'm not sure about that one. The IKV-103 is going down to 4.0 from 4.7. Ah, oh, wonderful stuff. The IKV-103 is trash. Um, it's always been trash, and it is nice to see opinions being validated. I remember when this thing came out, and it was around about like 6.7 or 6.3 or 6.0 or something, and people said, ah, oh, it's fine, it's got a heat shell, and it's got heat FS, which pens 400 millimeters. This thing is now going to 4.0, and and it, it, it needs it. It's an absolutely terrible vehicle. It is awful to play. Any vehicle where you can get your gunner machine gunnered, and you also have to face straight onto a target, is going to be crap. Especially since it can get artillery to death, it has limited uh, traverse, uh, or it has li limited horizontal traverse on the gun, it doesn't have any backup weapons either, and it also has a long reload for the gun. This thing is horrifically bad. Uh, so, good to see it go down in BR again. Also, there's a pretty nice 4-0 lineup for Sweden, so maybe that'll help it out a little bit too. But it's just nice to see that uh, it's it's just doing absolutely terribly because it's just a hor it's a horrific vehicle to play. One of the most annoying when it comes to the game. The uh, Roycat 105 is going up to 9.0. Uh, a little bit surprising for this, um, since the Chieftain Mark 10 is still not going down in BR. But the Roycat 105 does have a lot of nice factors on it. it has the APFSDS has mobility. Um, you know, they improved the mobility of weird vehicles on most uh, ground after the most recent update. And also, you know, the thermals are really nice as well on it. So overall, I, I can't really complain about this one. Uh, I I struggle in the standard Roycat, but that's more of the gun. And the Roycat 105 fixes this issue with actually having a decent gun. So seeing it go up in BR, not too surprising. It's more surprising that we don't see stuff like the Chieftain Mark 10 go down in BR or the Khalid. What they've also done is a bunch of balance changes which aren't related to the battle rating changes, starting off with the M10s. So the M10 GMCs for China, France, and America 
uh, their rate of fire has been increased from 9.5 to 10.9. I've never liked the M10s. Uh, the major reason is, is because the horizontal traverse is horrific, which massively limits the vehicle. Also, at the same time, with the prevalence of cast nowadays, it makes them very rough to play in a lot of scenarios, and that can be uh, very annoying. So is, if there's a second or a third spawn, you are just a target for planes, and it just doesn't work very well at all. So not a huge fan of those, but nice to see a little bit of a buff. Hopefully this helps them in the start areas of the game. The Marder 3 is also getting an increased rate of fire from 10 to 12, uh, so a little bit of a buff to that one. Same issue as the M10s, it's an open top tank destroyer. If you, if you spawn at anything that isn't first spawn, you're just going to die uh, to a plane. The T-69 2G is going, is going too well, uh, so they're reducing its rate of fire uh, to 7 uh, rounds per minute instead of 8. And to be honest, it's not too much of a surprise. Uh, this vehicle is a very powerful one. Just understand that if you buy it in the Chinese Lunar New Year sale, this thing is going to get... Um, nerfed a little bit, but it still has a fantastic lineup around it and still should be fine. Another vehicle which is weird to see not go up in BR is the WMA301, but say la vie, uh, what are you going to do at the end of the day? And finally, the Khalid, the good old Khalid, the, the vehicle which makes absolutely no sense, is getting a buff which it needs. So the Chieftain Mark 10 uh, in War Thunder has access to the L23 shot. But for some reason, the Khalid and 90, the same BR, only got access to APDS. It's now getting the standard L23 round uh, that the Chieftain Mark 10 uses. Now remember, the L23 is one of the weaker rounds uh, at, <laughs> at 9.0, but for some reason, they thought the Khalid would be too powerful. Uh, it, it didn't need this. Like at 60 degrees, the L23 pens 192. If you compare that to a more standard round at 9.0, such as the one on the Leopard 1A5 with the good old L7, the DM33, that pens 236 at 60 degrees. So we're not talking about a mega round here, we're just talking about something to make it viable. So now with the Khalid, with that round added, you have a choice. Do you want more armor in the form of the Chieftain Mark 10, or do you want more mobility in the form of the Khalid? And let's just say this, you always go for mobility, especially if your armor is still brew and people are firing the M33 at you. They've also changed the adjustments to rules to progress through the ranks for ground. So Sweden, uh, the number of units required to unlock rank 4 has been increased to 6. Israel, uh, the number of units required to unlock rank 5 has gone up to 6. And Japan, uh, the units required to unlock rank 7 has been increased to 5. Uh, so overall, these are obviously negative changes. Um, you know, I mean, from a personal point of view, I don't mind them because it means more people uh, get to play full lineups and research vehicles to do it. But obviously, a lot of people want to uh, want to kind of grind uh, through the tech tree to get to specific areas. Uh, so this will unfortunately hinder that. Uh, so a bit of a problem. But at the end of the day, at least you get to experience a bit more. So with Naval, we're going to look at Arcade, because that is the game mode that I play. And first of all, we start off with a surprising one, in my opinion, and it's the British Destroyers. The Nepal, Kelvin, and Jervis are all going from 4.7 to 4.3. Now, all these vehicles are very similar to each other, the N-Class, the K-Class, and the J-Class. They all basically have the same main guns, uh, which is obviously what, you know, people are going to be using. But I thought these guns were good. Uh, you know, three sets of these dual-mounted 4.7s, and generally they have good uh, kind of coverage on them. I thought generally I'd, I had a really good time in all of these vehicles. Uh, the major issue I had with them was the fact that they were ranked 2s, so you couldn't always do your dailies with them. That's why stuff like the Armada, the Tobruk, and of course the Diana always felt a little bit better. Uh, but the 4.7s, uh, you know, they give you a decent rate of fire. You know, you have 12 rounds per minute on them. And they could put out a ton of damage, and it was kind of a it was kind of a little interesting thing. You could either run the 4.7 inch guns, uh, which have, uh, as I said, um, a little bit more of a punch uh, to them, and you also get more of them compared to the other uh, vehicles. Um, or you could run the 4.5 inch guns, which have a higher fire rate, but you have less of them. The Armada only has two sets of 4.5 inch guns, 
where the Tobruk once again also only has two sets of them. The Diana, which has just been recently added, is the slight difference where it has three sets of them, which is why it's very odd that it's at 4.7, because it's just better than all of the other 4.7s that Britain has. But to see these machines go down to 4.3 is actually really nice. Um, it basically means that now the Eskimo, the tribal class, will get uh, some, you know, will get some kind of support for it. Uh, but also at the same time, I don't think it's needed. All these vehicles play really well. They feel really nice. And the British uh, destroyers are, in my opinion, the second best gun destroyers in the game. Uh, just uh, behind good old America, where most of their destroyers are at, of course, 5 -0. The other one is the Ubari. Now, the Ubari is trash, um, so it going down to 4.3 uh, is completely fine. Um, this vehicle is the premium of the Ubari class, um, and it's just a vehicle which does not feel very good. Um, it's just one of those higgledy-piggledy vehicles where it's a light cruiser, uh, which just doesn't have any armor on it, which is always a bad sign. And it just has some weird sets of guns. Uh, it's kind of like the one they just added to the Soviets, where it's um, kind of uh, it's it's a it's a junk sale uh, vehicle where it just has little bits of everything added to it. So it has these two dual-mounted sets of one forties, which you know if they hit uh, are not bad, but they haven't got the best rate of fire, and there's only two sets of them. Then you got a one twenty randomly on it, then a bunch of twenty five millimeters, then a bunch of torpedoes in very odd places meaning that it is not exactly easy to use them, and also you only get two sets of torpedo tubes, so generally it's going to take ages to do it. You are also a massive target, and since you are a massive target at a BR where there's a ton of destroyers, which fire AP or fire HE, and also you have two massive armor racks and the rest of your machine has pretty much nothing of value in it apart from engines, it's very easy to work out where to kill this thing, and if you knock out one of its turrets, that's half its firepower just straight up gone. So the vehicle itself, not a surprise to see this one go down. Um, there is a lot of vehicles like this in the Japanese tree. The early cruisers uh, like the Isuzu, the Kako, and the Kuma all feel like this, and they all feel pretty weak. So uh, if we see more of those go down, I wouldn't be surprised at all. When it comes to the ones going up in BR, you once again have some British bangers. You've got the Brantford and the, the Liscombe, or the Lyke, or the Lyscombe, depending on where you are in the country. So um, the Isle class and the uh, good old flower class, which is what these things are, um, it's not really a surprise to see them go up in BR. They're vehicles which, in general, do pretty well um, because of the fact that they got access to much tankier DMs more recently. And also, uh, with the major guns on them, they are actually able uh, to one-shot PT boats. So, um, with the uh, gun on the front, the 4-inch on the IO class, and also the 102 on the flower class, uh, if you hit a PT boat, it pretty much just died. So, um, it's very easy to do with them. You can also sit at the back and just keep bonking over and over again, and the only thing that can kill you is a plane. Uh, which uh, is really nice. So these vehicles are not bad. Uh, I get why they're going up in BR. I think they'll struggle because they'll start running into things that they can't just one tap, but they should be fine. The car me, uh, the PC-466, this is also uh, going up in BR as well. Not too much of a surprise there um, as a vehicle, once again, another one which uh, has got a bit of a buff when it comes to its damage setup. The SE-497, uh, uh, for example, is already at uh, 2.3, uh, with the Kami being at 2.0. They're pretty similar vehicles, so uh, I can understand why uh, these vehicles are going up. The two 3-inch guns on the Kami, uh, even though they don't one-tap vehicles, since their fire rate is pretty high, uh, they're able to just constantly put out damage over and over and over again uh, and do pretty good. Uh, the survivability can be okay if you just go kind of, you know, hull front, and then uh, don't really move, so yeah, not too much of a surprise. The ones which are a surprise to me are the Type f Type uh, K8 number 13, and also the KM5. Uh, these vehicles I don't think are very good. Um, the the KM5 uh, specifically uh, as a vehicle is one uh, which I wouldn't say 
uh, has you know a huge repertoire of armament on it or anything like that. It just has one 15 millimeter and two 792s and then two torpedoes. But I suppose at that lower BR, you generally don't have too much stuff anyway. But I, when I look at this boat, I I don't see it as something which is just taking over metas. Uh, but then again, a lot of the reserve boats for naval are very poor. So maybe one 15 millimeter really is taking over the game. Uh, which will be a surprise. The K8, though, that vehicle, um, at least uh, in my opinion, the Type K8 number 13, unless they've changed it in some way when it comes to, like its damage uh, model or when it comes to that, it's an incredibly poor vehicle. Like, it has two 13.2 millimeters on it on the back, and then it has this donkey 80 millimeter gun on the front, uh, or 76.2 millimeters specifically, doesn't have access to AP, just has HE to donk people with. It's kind of hard to one-shot people because of the overpressure stuff. And overall, I I would be very surprised if this thing is just doing insanely good. But, uh, you know, Sailor V, maybe it is. It just seems really, really odd to me. But uh, anyway, those are all the changes um, when it comes to it. Most of the ground ones, I think, are uh, fine. The M48 one, I definitely disagree with, and the naval ones, uh, I'm very surprised to see the British stuff go down. Um, everything else makes sense to me, apart from, of course, the uh, KM5. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Forge, Siegebreak, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, and also Sem Arslan, Wilkski, uh, Uncle Bean, Derek R., Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.